So I said to myself, I said, self, who's the raunchiest, most offensive, really? I mean, offensive might not be the right word, um, but certainly the most lesbian guests that I've ever had on the show, who should I have on this time around? Now, to be honest, I didn't make this choice, okay? I would have made this choice. It's the obvious choice, but I left it up to my lovely TNA, Tracy. So for this show, you have Tracy to blame. That's uh, that's my intro today. Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. It's I'm really excited about this. A uh, really good friend of mine on today. But um, anyways, um, first off, uh, this week, Monday, today's Monday, uh, today, I'm working on little Anna Ashley, one of my favorite human beings in the world. She has a lovely way of... She's British. I mean, I love this. But on top of that, I hear she has an amazing singing voice. But we're working on Newcomer. It's the Dads of Stillwater. Now, we've already done a couple of these Dads of Stillwater, but this is actually a prequel to the Dads of Stillwater. So we're going to do that. Then we're going into Perilous Courts Book 3, which... It's so freaking good. Tavia Lark, I love it to death. That's a dual narration with Kurt Graves. That's for Podium. And I think we're going into some tentacle love this weekend, which is going to be a lot of fun. A little KL hires. Um, and that's going to take us through the end of the week. So that's what we're working on. We've got the Rambling Rambling coming up on Thursday as per normal. Um, past that... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's been a busy day. But um, <clears throat> my guest coming on today, I think I've already given enough of it, but I'm going to read. <clears throat> I've been trying to do this. I'm trying to be professional here. I write contemporary gay romance. Now, this is Kelly Fox. She's speaking in her voice, obviously. I can't do a Kelly Fox impression, or I would. I write contemporary gay romance. No, that's not Kelly Fox. I write contemporary gay romance, which is to say that I curse way too much, drink exactly the right amount of red wine, and sleep far too little. I'm also lucky enough to live in central Texas with my wife and two dogs, where the astonishing diversity of humans and landscapes and tattoo shops serve as my muse. And she goes on to try and sell herself, giving you the Facebook shit and stuff. Maybe I should read that. I don't what, want to know what projects I have coming up. Uh, check me out on my Facebook reader group, The Fox Den, for giveaways, first look cover reveals, and more. And follow me on Amazon to be notified of new release by email. There you go. The lovely, the always, <clears throat> well, let's just say offensive, our favorite lesbian from Texas, Kelly Fox. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I fuck everybody. God damn it. <laughs> I uh, I was I I was actually gonna change my ways. I was gonna change my ways. This show I was gonna not call you a lesbian because every time I do and I I understand that you're bisexual, but then I pulled up, I pulled up the picture on. If anybody wants to go to her website and look, she has a dyke haircut in this fucking picture. Uh, you really do. So it suggests otherwise. It suggests that you're lying to me, and in fact you are. But it looks like you're growing it back out. So it's lovely to see you. By the way, I've missed you. It's nice to see you too, John. <laughs> I, you. I didn't realize how long it had been since I talked to you. <laughs> yeah, I was looking back. I was like, all right, get a picture for the promos and all that fun shit looking for. And like, I had to go back to the archives and I was like, fuck, it's been that long. And then all the way back to the yeah. GRL 2021 when you uh, you spent a little bit of time in my yeah. hotel room. In St. Louis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a little yeah. while. No, that was fun. It was fun to be able to do that with you live. I, I, I enjoyed that very much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it has been a while. It has been a while. I have been, I don't know about, well, you have been too, but like busy as fuck. I mean, busy, I mean, busy, busy. I made a big mistake, okay? I was, I've been riding the line of my, uh, my uh, <clears throat> getting shit in on time, deadlines kind of thing for a while. But then October, sure. I scheduled October off, but then November hit and I had some personal issues and I took an entire month off after I took almost an entire month off. And that <sighs> fucked me so hard. Yes. I'm still catching up. I'm still, I'm sending emails to my, my clients are great. I have the best clients in the world, bar fucking none. But yeah. I've sent emails off saying it's going to be in here and I'm just doing my best to swim and catch up. Yeah. How about you? How's your the whole deadline <laughs> writing? Yeah. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> yeah. Well, just in December, I got really sick. Like I got, I had not been, it didn't come up on COVID. Like it came up negative for COVID. But I think that was that shit was COVID or it was the other one, the RSV or whatever, because I have never been so sick in my entire life for so long. There were like three weeks where I couldn't get a damn thing done. And so there were a couple of things. And, and, and in fact, I've got a book coming out tomorrow that I almost didn't do. I almost canceled it because I was so far behind. But, you know, I 
I got some help from some friends and what I did is I just like head down, get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. And so I, I had three titles that I had to complete, not, you know, two were novellas and one was a full length. And, you know, I was supposed to get a lot of that done in December, but I had to spend most of January doing the, you know, finalizing those three titles. And on the last day of January, <laughs> I got it done. Um, and then um, I'm, I'm, I had given myself, because why not, a challenge um, to get a book written in February. And <laughs> I could kick my own ass for that. But I, I will say that I am probably not going to get it done by tomorrow, but I will probably get it done by Thursday. Um, so that's not too bad. That's not too far off the mark. I'll take it. But You're working. I, I won't be doing this to myself again. I've learned lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I me hope. too. Me, me too. Quite a bit, actually. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. GRL, are you going to the next GRL, the one in Virginia? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I, oof, I am trying to schedule my time in such a way that I don't have deadlines hitting at GRL. Yep. Um, so we'll see. I've also been... Um, also in the last year, and I don't mind talking about this because I think we've all been kind of hit by some sort of it. It's actually been really hard for me to get out of the house. I'm not totally agoraphobic, but it's been almost overwhelming. And I think some of that is some of the schedule that I've set for myself. And so this year is kind of a transition year because I'm doing something different with the way I publish, which I'm super excited about. So I, when we get closer, I'll know. Um, so right now I'm going to say no for this year, but I'm hoping for next year, if I start to feel like I've got a really good handle on it and this new process is working for me, uh, I might change my mind over the summer. So well, you gotta, you gotta tell yes. me about this new process. I, I, I love talking to you because mm -hmm. I, I've started my own business. You, you are now full time. Yeah. You're, what is this? 18 months or is this two years for you full time? Is... Um, this is, this is about 18 months full time. And, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's good memory. Um, so one thing that I have been doing, and a lot of people do this because it's the only way we really kind of can, is you, you write a book and then you publish it. You write a book and then you publish it. And um, especially if you're like working full time while you're writing, a lot of times, I mean, unless you're willing to wait like a solid year before you publish a, a series, you know, um, that's how you do it. And for me, the way I like to write is because I like to like interweave things in the books of a series. Um, one of the suggestions that's often made to writers of series is to try to write, uh, if not the entire series first before you publish the first book, at least the first three or four books. And so this year I am making that transition. Um, the mm -hmm. series that I'm working on right now, Wild Heart, um, I did the first book last year and I am writing right now. I'm in the middle of writing the last three books together. And I can already tell it's a better process for me because sometimes things happen with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, a character that I didn't anticipate, like that I didn't outline, that it just sort of flew out of my fingertips. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's awesome. And so by this gives me more freedom to do even more of that so that if I'm in like that third book out and... I realized something about a character, I can go back to the book I haven't published yet and adjust for it, you know? Um, but if you do the public, you know, write, publish, write, publish, then how it is is how, you know, you kind of have to stay true to that. So um, I'm excited because it allows me to sort of half bake a couple of cakes um, and then finalize them before they go to publishing so that it's a more cohesive series. So that, that and it'll also allow me to take like the month of May off uh, of writing so well there's that too but also advertising done. advertising right yeah. you can actually advertise in advance of a release yes. and huge and i can also instead of releasing every eight weeks or every nine weeks i can release every like six weeks you know and you should be able to line up audio pretty close as well working that far in advance yeah. that's yeah. one of the yeah. frustrations that happens to a narrator is like yes. we have to, we have to book a couple few months out. We got to eat, but at the same time, yeah. our new, our authors are constantly publishing new work, and you want to get it out as close right. as you can. So you try and keep a slot available for that. But yeah. like I've I've got 
you can't always, or, yeah. Yeah, 12, 12 or 14 authors in my stable. So sometimes that gets really difficult and right. trying. But you want to pull it off because you know the sales are going to be better. There's absolutely no doubt. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so and that's, that's also, you know, and then, you know, one of the things I'm looking at like this year is, you know, um, uh, Amazon or Audible is, is fucking around with our prices. And I'm curious to see how that all kind of plays out. So I've had a bunch of stuff come out just now, and it's actually doing well. Uh, it, like you said, it would have done better had I been able to get it out closer to the release of the books. Um, and so I'm curious to see, uh, I'm curious to see, you know, whenever Amazon makes changes, it really, <laughs> Yeah. You know. Well, so, I've and like I'm curious, like for you, like has that have have you seen any trickle down from that? And what's your take on that? Well, we're going to be getting what there'll be a royalty check coming in tomorrow or the day after somewhere in there. And we'll see. I haven't yeah. I've been at this long enough. And at this point, I've got enough royalty titles out there, which is basically I guess that's a, yeah. equivalent to what you have. I mean, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Except mm -hmm. you're probably making 40 percent on yours because you're paying out as opposed to me making 20 percent of mine. because I'm getting a cut. But I know my number. Gotcha. I know about where I hit every month as far as a range yeah. of where our check is. But I haven't looked at actual yeah. sales numbers in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Just haven't. Because what I do is I look at um, um, essentially units sold with the the total that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there is like, you know, a typical average for that for me per unit mm -hmm. sold. Um, so that's how I know how many units I need to sell before I break even, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, so what we got last month was still under old guard. And I think maybe this month too. And then next month is when I think we'll that's, see. That's what, what I was questioning too. Per unit is. Yeah. That's so, what I was questioning too, I'm, when we were going to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, what if what they say is true? And I mean, I, I want our listeners to be able to, I, I, I like that it's lower for them. Uh, but I just need to see, you know. Are you able? Are you able to to describe the change that they've made? Because I've only seen it just in passing. Sure, sure. Essentially, what they're doing is they are significantly. Uh, uh, this percentage might be wrong, so check me on it. You know, if you're listening in. But I think they're going to start reducing the price of Audible books by like twenty percent. You know. Um, up to, let's just say, but they're going to definitely mm -hmm. be reducing the price of the book so that they can move more because I think the feedback that they're getting from the people who, who use audiobooks is that their prices are much higher than everybody else's. And I think they're losing business from it. And so their, um, their theory is they're going to lower that. And so then that'll bring more audible users and that'll bring more people to, um, their their monthly deal that they do mm -hmm. so um what that means though is because everything that you and i do is percentage based you know mm -hmm. yeah or a lot of what you do but all of what i do on that is percentage based that that means i will get um a you know less per audio mm -hmm. um sold you know so my unit cost is going to be or my unit um, royalty is going to be lower and so then, you know, we need to see if we'll actually sell enough so that that lower rate still kind of comes out in the wash. Are they, um, are they also, do you know if they're lowering the subscription price or not? I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious yeah. if I'm not looking at the, you know, if people are responding live, but I don't know. I don't, I doubt it, but yeah, uh, I no, know but... that actually there, so there's like four numbers, uh, four ways that we get paid from Amazon on my side. Mm -hmm. um, or they, there's, you know, they send us a, a spreadsheet and there's like four columns. And so the thing I just described only affects, impacts one of their columns. So mm -hmm. I'm actually pretty hopeful that it'll still be fine. Um, but it's just, it's something I'm keeping an eyeball on because, um, you know, I'm trying to be a business person, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone through, I think I'm kind of numb or jaded to the changes that they make like this. I, yeah. When I first started with Audible, the we were getting 50% 50, uh, 50 of the sale instead of 40% that we get now, right? And it was also a tier system, too. So if you sold 1,000 copies of a book, it went up to like 52 
percent. Then for every thousand after is like fifty three and fifty four. I've got several copies of books that I've had out for eight or nine years that were in the sixty yeah. percent, like the top tier, whatever it was. I yeah. forget what it was, so don't probably yeah. lying on the actual number, but it was somewhere in there. Um, yeah. Uh, and and they pay substantially more, but. That being said, they've stacked up so much. I've seen so many of these changes. I just, I was, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, uh, and that's, the, yeah, that's kind of, I'm trying not to, the thing I want to avoid for myself just because, you know, when you're doing all of this work and it's every decision you make is all on you. <laughs> it could be a little terrifying. And so in that way, like overly involving myself in that would, almost like just stop me cold, you know? And so I'm like, mm, I, I, that I wanted to be aware of, um, just because it does like, you know, have a bottom line impact to me. Um, but, um, I, I agree. I think that over concerning myself with that or anybody over concerning themselves with that is a really good way to I, I, yeah, I got caught up in a couple of them <laughs> over the years, but even like, you know, code gate, I think they called it. And a few of those that are going on. Um, and a, a yeah. lot of our, uh, some of our listeners and, and, and viewers are not going to know what these are, but a lot of you are, uh, most of our people in here are authors and that sort of thing. We do have some that are not, yeah. but I, I, after a little while, I just tuned out. <laughs> All, all I do at this point is I just yeah. pay attention to that bottom line. But uh, it will be interesting to see if that bottom line number stays the same or not, you know. Um, are yeah. you yeah. – are you? Um, I'm curious about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, so for this new strategy, what series do you have planned? What are you working on? Are you working on multiple? I don't really know your strategy. I'm working on um, – so, uh, so with this new strategy, the series I'm finalizing that on is Wild Heart. And then I don't have a name for what I'm working on next. Um, but it'll be, um, we're going to get away from the ranch and we're going to get away from the murder mostly, <laughs> you know, me. <laughs> mostly we'll sprinkle. Yes. right. Like, yeah. you know, some people just need to die. Uh, <laughs> what fun is it to be an author if you can't kill people? Come on. <laughs> Come on. And the ones who need to die, especially in, in very satisfying ways. Yeah. I, I'll, let me circle back around to that later, but just as far as the. The, the series I've got coming up um, that I'll be writing over the summer for like a fall release. <sighs> I'm so excited about it because um, I'm, I'm putting it in or around like the neighborhood I grew up in Austin in. And so like some of the, you know, the name of the neighborhood and the streets and stuff like that will all be fake. But um, uh, I kind of just want see the the everything I write, regardless of whether or not it's on a ranch or with murder or whatever, it's all about the found family, and so I just I've had this collection of like cool characters that just like need a home, and I'm like a ragtag group of like to me like a a neighborhood that's sort of like right on the edge. Um, where you've got like just working class folks who are trying to make it. And then you've got like, and this is very true. This is exactly what's happening in Austin. You've got wealthy companies moving in and taking over open spaces that used to be public spaces for the people who lived there and they're monetizing them. And uh, I don't think that, that that's going to be sort of like a, a background story, but essentially you've got you've got that happening and then you've got people who are just bad for the neighborhood and so in my mind um we've got this sort of scrappy inner group of folks from this neighborhood who are like trying to get rid of the bad influences over here and trying to push back on all of the corporate bullshit over here mm -hmm. and and just like having a good place for for you know like a cool queer neighborhood um vibe and so that's kind of where i'm going with it is because like in austin there are these like little pocket neighborhoods that are just really super cool like uh, for different reasons some of them are queer some of them are super artistic a lot of them are both um yeah I'll give you an example there's a neighborhood in austin that people love to go to during christmas time because every house on the street every single house on the street is done up so much like it, it covered in lights just covered and it's such a and it's a it's a tiny it's like a block and a half it's it's a nothing amount but thousands of people will drive through there uh during the christmas season because 
because it's not just lights and like pretty lights they, everything is done very artistically so a lot of it is like weird and cool mm -hmm. um, or just weird you know and um so we have a lot of little pockets of that still left in austin and so that's kind of what i want to capture is that sense of neighborhood um, and family from disparate places there's also probably going to be a priest that carries a big stick that's now are you so when you refer to a big stick i'm assuming what you're meaning yes, is the both. size of his okay yeah so <laughs> he's actually no, no i mean like an actual stick like he 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 will violently uh uh protect the neighborhood uh but then also yes the other <laughs> right and a huge yes, stick right <laughs> yes now i'm assuming in the spirit of kelly fox you are uh will, will yes. there be uh, and i i know this is a fan favorite will there be characters from other stories that might oh, appear for in sure. yeah maybe it's um <laughs> you know, some some of right, sorry my yeah, my if my dogs go off, my wife just walked in. But it's all yeah, right. I, I, I can't I write know. a series. I can't write one series and not bring in other characters. Um, mm -hmm. And so I already have like one character that kind of popped up in this book that I'm writing right now, and I'm like, I'm going to pluck him out and put him over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are people in the, in, the, some... in, in in the crowd, uh, Dave and Millie, uh, Anders, Hopper. There are people like shouting out names that they want to. Be yeah, yeah. So. Anders always shows up. I never outline Anders. I've never put Anders in an outline, save for his book. And he shows, that motherfucker just shows up. That is not my fault. He just shows up. So I, I just don't, I just don't stop at it anymore. Like, there are some very cool writers who are like, these are what my characters are. This is what they will do. That is very interesting to me. It is not how my brain operates because if the characters go no i would never like the character looks at the outline especially if i'm about halfway through the book and it looks at the what's left of the outline and they're like no <laughs> wow and and i just follow what they say but um that, that usually that's how i end up with people like hopper and anders because like hopper showed up because i had like this really cool smooth mafia boss and i'm like it would be really hilarious like he's able to be cool and smooth because he's got like a fucking insane bulldog just right at his shoulder all the time like people don't fuck with luca who's the the mob boss because he's a mob boss but they really don't fuck with him because hopper <laughs> is the alternative and um so like he he hopper wasn't in the outline either um, it amazes me the things that your imagination come up with yeah. by the way i've read a couple of your books you yeah. paid me it was nice and yeah. it amazes me exactly what comes out of there i uh i look at this picture before <laughs> me and but when you get the kind of cackle going on i kind of i kind of i kind of feel it you know i kind of believe it before then i'm like there's no yeah. way but then no 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 you get the little cackle going and Makes perfect sense. Excitable murder puppy. I love him. Uh, people Excitable, are, oh, that, they're, yeah. they're, they're, murder they're, puppy. That's that's Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are fans apparently. Yeah. Um, but that's like very it. exciting, I, by the way. Yeah. What I enjoy is uh, I, I enjoy watching the growth of a small business. I um, <clears throat> you are yeah. progressing, in my opinion, very quickly. By the way, but um, and yeah. mine, I remember uh, changing my workflow, and I still to this day, I'm ten years in, something like that still changing it still tweaking it still also because of the yes. adhd i think i just have to have change every little while i can't just continue doing it the same way but yeah yeah it eats me alive sometimes yeah. <laughs> well so it's funny because so a couple of things come to mind because to me like i feel like i'm doing very well like when i look objectively at like my numbers and my sales and you know different there's different measures and by all objective measures, I am doing very well. Um, <clears throat> and I've had like a good steady growth. Um, so, you know, for a small business doing that, that's really great. And I mean, steady growth, but not weak growth, steady, strong growth. But what I haven't had is just one of those things that just went absolutely batshit. And, you know, so sometimes I look at that and that's very cool. And it's like, oh, I would really like that. But 
sometimes when things go batshit, that's because you have no control over it. You know, you just happen to have hit the zeitgeist um, that you almost can't even plan for it. Like when you talk to people who've had things that go batshit, they're like, I don't even know why that worked. And so for me, maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't, but the idea that I am growing steadily and that I have this like group of people who are growing with me, who uh, just in, like, uh, I, I think one of the things that surprised me was how much fan interaction would support and encourage me. And because like people genuinely want to see you do well. And that is, whoo, if I think about that too much, I'll get, I'll get emotional on you. Um, but so you, you, I, you've seen the way I work. I, 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 I stay yeah. right in the middle of it all day long. <laughs> I have to, um, yeah. I, I, I have my group of the brigadiers there with me all day and we, yeah. we are each other's yeah. water cooler kind of thing. And I, I have to, um, that keeps me motivated. Yeah. I, I tried not recently and it just didn't go as well as I wished. Um, <laughs> just absolutely yeah. didn't. I tried because changing that you're though. you're kind of just alone. Yeah. So like I have I, Gianni Holmes and I, um, um, we write together now and, um, that is so cool. Like, you know, she's off doing her thing. I'm off doing my thing. She's in Jamaica. I'm in Texas, <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. we check in with each other every couple of hours, like almost every day. And, um, I, know I don't her. know. I just I've, think this I've... is a really, really cool. I'm about to do another uh, one of her, her books. Genre. I cannot remember the title. Who knows? It's a Tantor project. Um, I just saw it coming up recently. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since her I've done Valentine one Her Valentine book is, whoo, that really? is some bad shit. I look, uh, that was a good book. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is like, ooh. There's, there's dark, and then there's twisty, and then there's like what she does uh, with this book. It was like, ooh. She's like, go in there. And I, I like that about her. She's very bold. I, uh, yeah. I, 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 it sounds like I might have to reach out to her about that <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking my language we're creep yeah excellent bring it on yeah cool awesome yeah so how's the uh how, how's everybody else how, how's how's um how's the family how's the wife how's the dogs everybody, uh, everybody how's alive um, yeah everybody's good uh everybody's doing well um it's funny because uh i think uh <laughs> so wifey when growing up was a soccer player she was goalkeeper and so she still loves soccer today. Like she loves it. Like our, our nephews are in, in soccer clubs here in Austin. And so she goes to all of those and there's a, there's, uh, it's now their third season. It just opened the third season this weekend. And mm. this, so you got to understand my wife is from St. Louis. So she's a big baseball fan yeah. and she has so many St. Louis t-shirts. It's, she, it takes up a whole side of her closet. So her craze for, for the Austin FC club here, she has as many Austin soccer shirts as she does St. Louis t-shirts. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. And so St. Louis just got a football club and, uh, they came down here over the weekend and, uh, they beat Austin. And I don't know if she knows how to feel about that. <laughs> Still thinking about it, put, putting hash marks yeah. on a paper somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Amy and I, um, so uh, her birthday is February 17th, mine is February 19th, and then our what we call paper anniversary, because we got married before it was legal in Texas. So uh, hers is 17th, mine is 19th, and our paper anniversary is the 21st. And so we just had that last week. And so um just as far as, you know, how's family doing? We're doing really well. And we love having that sort of celebratory week where, you know, like we go out to a really nice restaurant and we get each other nice gifts and stuff like that. And so um, it's all, it's all good in the hood. And I didn't realize this, but we, we have been officially married nine years. Um, Cause we had a, yeah, we had a, the, 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 you know, the, JP marriage essentially that we had up in the state of Washington. That's what this was. And then in the fall is when we had a, a family wedding that was also really super special. So mm -hmm. we always, we celebrate all of them. <laughs> Nine years. You're about out of the honeymoon at this point, I would think. Um... I know. Right. I like her though. I still <laughs> like her, you know, I, and we've been married and uh, we've been together um, since 2010 and we moved in together like three months into it. Uh, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> cue, cue the you all jokes. Um, uh... <laughs> no, that's exciting. I mean, it's it's true love, you know. And yeah. I've seen you two together. You're yeah. obviously great for yeah. each other. You make each other happy. It's fantastic. Yeah. Now, which yeah. is, I'm I'm going to miss you all if you don't come to GRL. It's going to be uh, sorely yeah. lacking one one and of that's... one of the enjoyable members. Oh, thank you. I and we we like we like it. You know, and I like going to GRL. I like being around people. I I think I just. I, I'm glad I gave myself last year, and, I, and I'm glad I'm giving myself an option for this year one way or the other. Uh, but I know that I'll be back into it again. So, yeah. but thank you for that. But, yeah, we uh, – my my thing that I tell her is you're my favorite. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if you see stuff in my books that's, like, super swoony, that's because <laughs> I'm – this uh, for my wife, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic well and i'm glad everybody's yeah. doing well um yeah we've got yeah. the uh oh i'm not sure if it comes up on camera or not i'm not sure if i can get that uh, my 20 year tattoo uh yeah. for jody and i but we've been together like 24 25 and we're in the stage right now where we're going to kill each other but we love each other and i think that it's going to end yes. up just loving each other but um yeah, yeah. i'm uh <laughs> We're, we're, we're you certainly have those moments where you're like, <laughs> it, it, it happens. It's, it's married life, but, uh, I'm, I've, I've yeah. never, never, I can't imagine another person in my life that would, would have still entertained me 25 years in somewhere in there and 20 years married. And I'm not exactly sure why she's so foolish, but I'll go with it. So. <laughs> this is what I say. You know what? If you're, if you, if this is going to be the decision you're making, that's fine. I'm going with it. If you're going to, if you're going <laughs> to fall for the bullshit I'm spewing. It's your own damn fault. That's a. <laughs> I think we amuse each other in different ways. Uh, I think we abuse each other in very different ways. Because uh, <laughs> I am legitimately bad shit, and but in a good way. I'm 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 crazy, but in a delightful way. I'm right. Funny crazy. Right. Fine. You're, right. Um, <laughs> you're like the fun drunk. You're like the fun drunk. Yeah. 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 I'm yes, and 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 she's like very. Um, she has like a stoicism that even 15 years in almost, oh, I guess not 15 yet, but you know, like nine years in for, for the marriage, but like, you know, 13 years in for the relationship. Um, I'll sometimes look at her and go, what are you thinking right now? <laughs> Cause she can look at me and she knows exactly what I'm thinking. I sometimes will still look at her and go, I have no clue what this look is. <laughs> Uh -huh. And she'll tell me, and I'm surprised every time, because she is very much a still waters run deep kind of person. And so, like, when I see these, she's not grumpy, but, like, when I see these grumpy sunshine books, or I see these, like, stoic and, and sort of manic pixie dream boy, you know, books, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I see where it comes from. <laughs> That's hilarious. And also gorgeous at the same yeah. time. That's awesome, Thanks. though. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Well, we will miss you. Um, a, a, a couple things here. Um, one is has is it Declan that has done some audiobook work for you recently? Is that the guy? Um, there's a yeah. I've heard yeah. tell of this in the Discord regions where I hang out on a daily basis, and I've heard that some of the uh, things he's been doing is particularly hot. Now I hear this from yes. people like little Alyssa grambling who's obviously my good friend and, and she does the rambling grambling show with me and and a couple other people as well so it's not just lissa so i know she must be on to something here um yeah. is this the she ranch series is. is that what it is it's the ranch series and he is also uh looks like he's gonna do not looks like he is gonna do he's set to do starting at the end of next month maybe in april um the the rest of the um uh mafia series as well nice and um it's just uh he just like took and he it's funny because um uh, with the second book of the ranch series we had a character who has an interesting accent and um he's you know his dad's from argentina his mom's from mexico and you know, but he also kind of moved to the state, you know, so there's like a couple of influences, you know, where you have, and then state of Texas, because he moved to Texas when he was a teenager. And so he had kind of all of those things going for him. And when Declan gave me a sample of Sparrow's voice, I was like, whoa, it's so weird when somebody actually hits exactly the note, like, 
you know, it's unreasonable to expect that like somebody can really hit like the sound that you have in your own voice because you've made it up in your head, right? And so when somebody does that, it's like, oh shit, that's cool. Um, And he has Mm -hmm. a good growl to his voice. Um, And so, uh, you know, in some Uh, of the the characters that, especially on the ranch series, like, you know, the, 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 the patriarch of the ranch, you know, so he's a slightly older guy. He has a good deep kind of gruff voice. Mm-hmm. Um, he does such a good job, but even the, the characters whose voices are higher, lighter, he does a really good job with those too. So he, he really did a really good job and all of the, the sex scenes are very hot. <laughs> I, uh, so, well, Declan, cool. it, one, he's great. Um, and two, from the yes. reactions I was seeing cool from guy. the crowd. Um, also I hear tell that, uh, one of our regulars in the crowd, uh, uh, Brigadier Cheryl. Uh, I think you've met Cheryl, haven't you? Um, yeah. She's from from Montana out there. At least online, yeah. She she feels that he's also physically attractive. So there's also that. Um, she was mentioning yes. this the other day, and I was like, really? I mean, she was comparing him to, like, models and stuff. So um, I think it's <laughs> good all the way around. All I right. think he's going to do. Uh, yeah. I'll pass it on. Right, if you could. I mean, I don't. I don't, I couldn't, I don't know his people, I guess, but you must, um, <laughs> my, my, my wife keeps, or I'll just message him directly. <laughs> you could do that. My wife keeps text, uh, yeah. keeps uh, texting me. We have tornado warnings at this point in my area, which is just oh. lovely. Yeah. It's awesome. Do I'm actually in, <laughs> well, I, we, we are about, we're wrapping up, but, uh, I'm in the safest room in the house. I don't know what she's fucking thinking. I'm in a, like a fortified <laughs> bunker pretty much. With you? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. With the dogs. I, we're all going to squeeze in the booth here in a minute. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the sirens have been going off for like an hour, but I thought we were doing pretty good anyways. Um, well, I mean, we can, there's not, there's not like one outside. This isn't like, you know, out okay. in the middle of Ohio. I'm not like in Texas where shit like this or Kansas, but anyways, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. You were a lovely guest and of course a good friend and I miss you. Thank so, you. uh, welcome on anytime. Thank uh, uh, thank you everyone for hanging out today. Um, by the way, uh, Wednesday we're doing my big photo shoot for the intro. So, uh, anyone that sent me anything in the PO box, I'll be sending your outfits back, uh, hopefully this weekend. So. Have fun. Love you. See you all for Rambling Gremlin on Thursday. Wave to the camera. Say bye. Bye, y'all.